Golden Rule Radio is brought to you by McIlvaney ICA. ICA has been America's foremost precious metals brokerage firm since 1972, helping you build a strategic precious metals portfolio. Call 800-525-9556 to buy gold, silver, platinum, or palladium today, or go to McIlvaney.com. Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio. We have gold at 1789, silver 24, platinum at 980. Palladium pulled back to 2250. The dollar index is sitting at 92.7, and the Dow Industrials at right around 35,000. And last week we talked about the dollar potentially having another little rally, and that's what it started the last couple of days of trading and put a little downward pressure on gold. Gold had a nice pullback, touched one of the major trend lines upwards, and the dollar came into a 786 number. So did exactly as we said last week. We talked about fundamentals of the dollar and things going on in the world affecting that long term. We'll focus this week's show on the charts, but I want to also direct you to Dave McIlvenny's weekly commentary where he really dug into the fundamentals of the dollar and things going on around the world that are going to affect the dollar long term. So go listen to that and let's jump right into the charts. Yeah, thanks, Robert. I thought we had a pretty good chat last week in a very exhausted market situation. I know I brought up last week that almost everything was showing pretty strong divergence against the trend. And lo and behold, what happens, we came into some resistance levels in the metals as well as the Dow. And everything has taken a little bit of a nap over the past week, come back down. So it is good to see that you tend to follow patterns in the pricing of things. And here we can see gold pushing up to around 1835. So coming into those old highs from earlier this year, July, August, around 1835, and then coming back down to a bit of a floor, 1771, I would say, is the floor. And we're just above that around 1789, as you were mentioning. Now, Tori brought something up earlier. I have to give credit where credit is due because Tori, being the diligent member of Golden Rule Radio here every week, is constantly going back and re-experiencing my genius by re-watching the shows over and over and over and over again until he has them memorized. But in my mind, <laughs> that's exactly what happens when you go home at night. You have to listen to me all day long, might as well listen to me all night long. But no, I really appreciate you bringing this up because it was a really good point. So we're going to look at this more shorter term, maybe last three or four months chart where I had brought this up a couple weeks ago where we had to get back above this interim floor that gold had put in back in July into the beginning of August and that was right around 1789. So if we look at a chart uh, about the middle of August, so a couple weeks ago we we're bouncing around on this and we needed to see it break above and push up and test the next high, which was around 1835. Well, that's exactly what we've done over the last couple weeks. So we've stair-stepped up with the divergence that Robert and I talked about last week in gold, came into and hit that high at around 1835 for the first time since around July, and with the divergence and the first time into that high, filling some standing sell orders at that price. Obviously, we've had this nice pullback this week. So we're back just under 1800 My question, of course, is did that old high of 1789 now become the new low of 1789, and are we going to stair-step up to the next high? And that really is what triggered my question, because I've used those numbers quite a bit in conversations with clients. That's a pretty clearly laid out pattern there from a support and resistance level standpoint. I was excited last Friday. I don't know about you guys. It really looked like we were going to easily break above that 1835, and it boom, it just fatigued right at that point. We had a nice close to the week, all for not coming in at the start of this week, and we gave it all away. But one of these days, we're going to break out of this channel to the upside or to the downside. So with that Friday spike and then the subsequent decline of plus 2%, what do we really attribute that to, Robert? I think the bounce up in the dollar put that downward pressure on gold. And I have to say, in the big picture, that's not really that much of a move with gold pulling back $30, $35, $40. And gold continues on a long-term basis to just build this base. I don't think I would be waiting on buying gold because 
you're going to break out of this sideways base building channel that we're in and it's going to head higher and it's going to leave people behind wishing they had done something in this level, even if it does come down a little bit more. Uh, so fairly technical move, I think, with dollar bouncing up, gold coming down. Yeah, I think I already said mine a second ago, right? I mean, we're coming into these support and resistance levels where you're going to have standing buy and sell orders that are going to push market one direction or the other as it moves through zones. So, Robert, technically looking at the dollar and looking at these rebounds at some FIB levels, I think we're seeing some pricing indications where you're going to have traders having standing positions. And I'll bet you anything, Tori, you've got a strong political or <laughs> geopolitical reason as to why. It may Anything have fundamental. Miles, Anything right? fundamental. Yeah. You yeah. put the charts, fun what in charts? dementals. No, <laughs> we, we talk about the fact that the news is going to push it to your guys' technical numbers. And that's, in my opinion, what happened this week with the Eurozone really driving. So we've had a lot of Federal Reserve discussion about a potential tapering and what that plan of action looks like. But the Eurozone is sort of ahead of us that way. And the ECB coming out and, and talking about decreasing their quantitative easing, that in my opinion, is really probably what drove that short-term dollar spike. And that also, in my opinion, with that U.S. dollar index rally, again, of a dying currency, all fiat currencies are dying. So to Robert's point, it's not like a real significant move either. But the FANGs also rallied. So watching the impact of that dollar strength in other markets, to me, can be pretty key. Yeah, and I do think that's the point, is you can watch these markets move and to some extent make predictions from a number of different angles. But for me, it's always about when you have multiple things all lining up at the same time. When you have a political or economic position out of a major currency zone like the US dollar, the euro, the Chinese yuan, something that has the clout to move a global market, as well as when you just have independent pricing levels within individual markets, like, say, the gold spot price itself. Or like, say, the silver spot price. Like, exactly. did it have any correlation with silver? Did we see any relative I think relative we call action? that a segue. Okay. Uh, yes, we did have some relative pricing action in silver. Silver's after coming into kind of this long-term floor uh, that we've been talking about for months now, I'll stick to it. While gold has been in a short-term bear market correction amidst the bull market, silver has just sort of been trading sideways with an upwards trajectory, or at least a minimal upwards trajectory. We have put in higher highs. We've put in higher lows. Our most recent higher low happened back the first week of August, and we've kind of been stair-stepping up since then. So silver did break above 25. Again, conversation Robert and I had last week about divergence. Silver broke above 25. We've seen a bit of a sell-off. But even amidst this long-term rising floor, we've had this little short-term rising floor that it's come down to. And silver didn't put in any type of lower low here over the last couple of weeks, just with this drop this past week. So silver, to me, even though it's on the bottom end of its trading range, looks very enticing because it's at the bottom end of its trading range. I'd rather pay 25 bucks than 30 for silver. And how about platinum? Is it is unremarkable to you guys technically as it appears to be just subjectively right now? Platinum just lagging? Platinum's bouncing around a thousand and as an industrial metal, it could have sold off a lot bigger than it did. I mean, we could be talking about platinum moving lower with other industrial commodities and getting hammered, but it's not. And I think it's showing some strength and showing some support around a thousand bucks an ounce. And I'm telling you Fast forward a few years here, and we may be looking at platinum one-to-one -one with gold. That's the ratio trading that we're looking at and, and seeing the value in buying a little bit of platinum, not getting too over your skis with it, still focusing on gold and silver. But owning a little bit of platinum, I think, makes sense here with it showing strength by not getting slammed to the floor. you have any key support or resistance levels to point out on that, Miles? No, I mean, I like the bottom end it went into there at the beginning of August around 975, and then we hit it again at the end of August. And it has actually put in some higher highs and lows since then. We really need to see platinum push maybe into the 1040, 1050 range and kind of hold up there so that some of the longer term highs end up getting broken. And obviously, you know, I'd love to see 
platinum up around 1150 or 1200 so that we can get above the July highs. But no, sideways trading in platinum since August, unlike its sister metal, palladium. See, there's another segue. There's a segue. Yeah, uh, yeah thanks. Unlike its sister metal, palladium, which hit that 618 fib perfectly back around August 22nd, bounced, but then came right down and actually today broke below it, at least inner day. And I do think that could end up mattering. We've been talking about platinum and palladium readjusting back to its historic prices. We've had Rob in here a couple times over the last six months discussing the relationship between platinum and palladium, not just in what we do in investment metals, but what's going on in the automotive industry, in the jewelry industry, in the industrial side of platinum usage, and some of the transition taking place there. So not only do I continue with Robert, believe that platinum needs to be a part of your precious metals portfolio, I would also argue that anybody that was smart enough to get into palladium 10 years ago and hasn't made that exchange over to platinum yet, you definitely need to give your advisor here a call. Well, it goes to Robert's point on the one-to-one parity with gold and platinum. I think we're going to likely see that palladium and platinum as well, at least one-to-one. And to me, it seems as if palladium needs to give up a lot more than platinum needs to gain. If you go back on the three-year chart on palladium and that aggressive climb, a 50% retracement in palladium would make a whole heck of a lot of sense here as reality sets in and gets closer to meeting that platinum price. And then from there, oftentimes you see platinum two to three times the price of palladium. But that would be that initial. So I hope you're right that it does matter. But I would like to see platinum exceed its March high and get back up into that 1300 range. But getting kind of tired of waiting. Anything else to point out technically this week? No, I do like what Robert brought up about the dollar. Last week, while we were talking about the metals having been going up, and looking like they were exhausting that rise, the dollar was doing the opposite. The dollar had been going down, and right around the same time came into a rising floor in the dollar right around 92. So as Robert already brought up, it wasn't surprising to see a short-term bounce in the dollar. It's not surprising on the flip side of that to see a decline not just in things like commodities and precious metals, but also the Dow. It's really just, is the dollar going to continue rising short term? And that's where we do lean more on the geopolitical, economic, fundamental discussion. What's going on with the dollar, the euro, the Chinese yuan? Because the dollar index, as we keep mentioning, is an index. It's a relative value based on other currencies. It's not just the M2 money supply chart that we looked at a couple weeks ago. Well, that's all complicated too now by special drawing rights by the IMF. That's sort of an X factor that we hadn't really dealt with. But we've got five key underlying fundamentals to keep your eyes on in September. And I'll just fly through quickly. One is currencies, as we're discussing here. Like, what are they going to be making from a monetary policy decision standpoint, and whether it's tapering or easing. The other is debt ceiling. Yellen came out and said that the cash and emergency measures are pretty much going to run out in October. So Again? Nancy Pelosi, yeah, Nancy Pelosi has said she's not going to put the debt ceiling in the budget reconciliation bill. So they're going to try to kick that can down the road, but that will put pressure on the dollar. It'll put pressure on gold. The infrastructure spending due at the end of the month, a vote on that somewhere between one and three and a half trillion is the third thing. Fourth thing is COVID. President Biden is releasing his plan to quote unquote stop the Delta variant. He's releasing that tomorrow, the day that this show airs. So what economic measures is that going to entail? And then finally- he, Hold on. He has a plan? He has a plan to stop the Delta variant. Who wrote so was it? it? I did. You did? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't really. So w- what happened in Afghanistan was probably the plan. Yeah, also. right. Well, that's the sw- There's the segue of the day. The fifth fundamental that I will get to is the Taliban. So the Taliban now is inviting six countries to take part in their formal announcement of their new government. Turkey, China, Russia, Iran, Pakistan, and Qatar. Was that the plan? That was the plan. It was to just create a void and let those six countries who don't look upon us all that favorably to move in and fill the void. We're clearly not invited to the formal announcement of the new government. But the reason I say that is that's got the underlying fundamentals of geopolitical tensions once again starting to increase. So those are my five. That does it for Golden Rule Radio. You can follow us on Twitter at ICA Gold, like us on Facebook, McIlvaney Financial, our website, McIlvaney.com. 
then give us a call, 800-525-9556. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. Thank you.